Thanks very much for joining us for Episode 9 of Intech Freight and Logistics, the podcast. I'm Kevin Baxter, and I'm joined by my co-host for this edition, Intech President Shelley Austin. On this episode, we learn about learning, as in what types of learning opportunities are worth pursuing for those pursuing a freight and more specifically an intermodal career. Let's get started. Just as with any type of job, it's important to prepare yourself for a career in the freight industry. There are traditional degree programs for those just starting out, specializations for those changing careers, and opportunities for continuing education. On this episode, we discuss educational pathways for freight and especially intermodal with Hal Pollard, the Vice President of Member Services for IANA, the Intermodal Association of North America. Hal, thanks very much for joining us. Kevin, it's great to be here. I really appreciate you guys having me on. It's always a treat to talk with the good folks at Intech Freight and Logistics, especially since you were a mentor to me when I came into the industry, speaking of education, with all the awesome resources that you put together to educate the market. I used a lot of those to get started when I came in. So I feel like in some ways, you know, it's the least I can do. (laughs) Great. We appreciate it. So first of all, tell us uh, a little bit about what it is that uh, you do day to day with IANA. So my role at IANA covers three major areas. We have a fairly small staff, so everybody does a little bit of everything. We're fairly matrixed here, and that'll probably resonate with folks in transportation, especially in the broker 3PL space, IMC space, is that you know, you're always wearing a couple of hats at least. But what I do on a day-to-day basis, uh, I'm responsible for membership and marketing conferences and events and education. We have about a thousand corporate members at IANA. We are really honored and lucky to have Shelly as our chairman at the moment, chairperson. And that's broken down into five major divisions that roughly follow along the, the major actors in the intermodal space, marine, rail, motor carrier, 3PL, and supplier. And we try to to serve them in a, in a various methods. Obviously, there are some basic member services that we provide, but there are also a lot of intangibles that we provide through the membership that include, but are not limited to, but I think they're the, they're the main pieces of the puzzle that we work on trying to make sure that we get it right on a day-to-day basis is providing a platform for company awareness, so organizational awareness in the industry, ability to build a network of your own and a company network to interact with others, and then provide education. And that's probably the third, but in my opinion, possibly the most important leg of that stool, if you will. And we do that through a number of different avenues. We also will have two meetings a year. We just finished up our spring business meeting, which was great. That happens in May. And we usually, uh, it's a smaller meeting for us, but it's, it's, it's intimate. We do a lot of the governance there. So we'll have the board meeting. We'll have the intermodal access committee that oversees the UIA process there. We have three standing committees the operations committee, the maintenance and repair committee, and the safety committee, they meet. And then we have a full educational program. We also have a larger event in the fall called Intermodal Expo, and that takes place in Long Beach every September. That's got a very large educational program, as well as a large exhibit program. And then we also do the governance there as well. So I'm responsible for that, responsible for our webinar program, which we do, we do about six a year that are focused on numbers. So we, we really dig into the intermodal performance numbers. We also do six to 10 other webinars on various topics. We have a scholarship program that rolls up under me, and I would love to talk a little bit more about that later. Mm-hmm. And then we also have conferences and events group that is kind of working on ad hoc events throughout the year. So the great thing about my job is I get to do a little bit of everything all the time. I think it certainly resonates with, with Shelly probably at a 3PL, you're doing a little bit of everything all the time. Absolutely. Uh, frequently all at the same time. Very well said. <laughs> well, you mentioned education as like the, what you consider the most important, maybe pillar of that. I don't know if stools don't have pillars. The leg was a better, better <laughs> analogy there. But uh, so where does that passion for education come from? Has that been something that you've had, you know, even prior to joining IANA yeah, it's it's been sort of a common thread throughout my various careers, if you will. I started out in scholarly publishing, working at a, a university press, moved on to working at a commercial press and doing a lot of medical publishing, and then into the association world, 
and that's that's where I got the sort of the feel for for working in associations, uh, and then moved into a higher ed role, creating programs for undergraduate, graduate, and doctoral level programs. So it's sort of been a common theme. You know, I'm, when I moved from publishing into the sort of delivery, I, I kind of joke about like I jumped the fence. I went from, you know, creating the information to using the information. But, you know, to me, it was sort of a logical, you know, new place to go. And then when I came to IANA, um, it was a great opportunity to work on their education program. And um, that's how I got my start here. And I think, you know, that really set the hook for me in terms of what IANA, the opportunities IANA has to inform people, educate people, but also the opportunities that exist to get people excited about intermodal in the space. There's a ton of opportunity in the space and it really just sort of, you know, kind of got into my bones. So how you you said a lot there, and I want to touch on a few things, but as we're talking about education, you, you know, you've been around me long enough that this is something that I'm extremely passionate about as well in our industry. And you probably know, as most people do, that I'm kind of that picture pages kind of gal, even though we're on radio here and we're not really seeing anything. It's all about visualization, right? I got to see it to Absolutely. believe it. The other thing I think, too, when you're working with folks that are trying to figure out what they're going to do with their career that you have to help them understand the application of something. So for me, you know, I think it's always been kind of that hard thing to explain to people what IANA really is. And you mentioned the modes, right? And I think mm -hmm. if, you know, as we look at it, you say marine and people don't really understand what that means, right? But in putting it yeah. in pictures, it's like, have you ever been by a port and seen those fascinating cranes that are lifting thing, you know, the containers off? And then how does that all work? And how does that all put together? And then on equipment side, you're like, Ugh, equipment. And you think, but what if you're driving down the road and you're right next to a container on a chassis and, you know, you, you need to be safe. So you, you got to understand the equipment and what, how the equipment operates. And the railroads, well, I think everybody kind of knows what goes along with railroads. And then there's trucking. And then there's the three PLs that are kind of, the, you know, the, the ones putting it all together, managing it. So as, as we yeah. do that and we visualize and we think about all the different parts and pieces that are in an intermodal transportation solution, how do you work with people in high school or get that message out that, hey, this is not just, you know, planes, trains and on it, but it's not just a truck. It's there's there's a lot to intermodal and there's so many different puzzle pieces to put it together. How do you get them excited about what they do and how they move forward to pursue a career in transportation? But, you know, we're talking about intermodal. Let's just face it. Yeah, there's a game that I like to play with, uh, particularly high school students, and it's tell me something that you're interested in something that lights your passion. And I bet I can get you into a career or a job in a career in intermodal or at least in transportation in one connection. So this isn't a, you know, seven degrees of Kevin Bacon. This is a one degree <laughs> of, of, of intermodal, one degree of IANA. And I think, as you said, there's so much going on. It's about the equipment, sure. But it's more about, if you think about, you know, you look around any environment you're in, whether you're, you know, you're listening to this in your office, your car, you know, your home, gym, wherever, pretty much all the clothing that you wear, all the furniture that you sit on, all the equipment that you use, the technology that you rely on, a lot of the food that you eat, the medicine you take, et cetera, all travels at some point in its sort of life span, if you will, in a container. And the role of the folks in intermodal are to move that all around. And you, every aspect of that is managed by somebody. And I think, you know, it starts with a, a cargo owner, a beneficial cargo owner, or shipper, as we like to call them. And then frequently the next step in the chain is a broker, a 3PL partner that helps them make sense of all the different options that they have, the best way to reach their needs, whether it's a time issue or a cost issue or a, a specific way that the goods need to arrive. There's all sorts of factors that, that go into that and on and on. I mean, it really does. It is the infinite onion. You could continue to peel layers down and never stop, which I find super fascinating. And, you know, again, if you're into technology, we've got it in space. You know, if you're into working outside, got you covered. If you want to be an, an independent, you know, be your own boss, totally, you can do that. You know, if you like working with people, you know, we can cover that. If you're an introvert and you want to, you know, work behind the scenes, we can do that and on and on. You know, you like international travel, we can do that. You know, you like the water, sure. You like railroads, absolutely. Trucks, yep. 
you know? And so there's almost an infinite opportunity there. And when I've talked to kids, like for example, we have a scholarship program with Cal State Long Beach and they have a program with Cabrillo High School that we help we help fund through Cal State Long Beach and the Port of Long Beach also supports that program. Another great IANA member. And talking with those young people is the most invigorating thing I can possibly do because they are intelligent, they're insightful, they ask wonderful questions, they're curious, and their interests are so varied, but they all realize that intermodal can be a really exciting place for them. And it's really fun to be able to be part of an organization that's helping kind of bring that information to light to them. I love the layers of onion, how I might have to use that in, in my future speaking. Um, but Are there tears or no tears? I mean, I, I guess you can kind of, yeah, you <laughs> might depends per, on your perspective. I think there, right? Well, I was going to say there has to be some kind of psychology to this too, if you are in this, in this industry. So yeah, yeah good, <laughs> good call on that one, Kevin. But no, so, you know, we think about this, Hal, and you mentioned technology and you mentioned a lot of the things that, you know, some people, if they're, oh, I want to be an accountant. Well, you can be an accountant in our industry, you know, oh, well, I want to be an engineer. Well, please come into our <laughs> industry, you know? So there's yeah, these different ways absolutely. that you specialize in, in, in a lot of times that helps kids that are looking for the careers because it's better mm -hmm. to kind of have that specialization when you're going to look for a job. Absolutely. So one of the things that we talk about, especially on the technology side, is we're hearing so many different things, AI, all these different things in technology that you read in all the publications, social media and everything. So one of the things that that kind of hints to me is, why do we consistently need new entries into our field? And to me, one of those things is we need these folks that are learning about all this new technology. But, you know, tell us how what, you, what you're seeing is why do we have to continue to really push and really help keep that churning and getting new entry folks into our field? I'll go with a positive spin first. We always need new ideas. You know, if you have, you know, four people in a room and they don't ever meet anybody else, they're always going to have the same ideas right? They're never going to grow beyond the ideas that they can potentially come up with. Whereas you continually bring new blood, you know, expand that gene pool of knowledge. Exciting things happen when you bring new people to the table. I think, you know, frankly, in the industry, the baby boomers are really the generation that helped make intermodal what it is today. Like they are the ones that took it from a notion and turned it into a viable multi-billion dollar industry. The problem is a lot of those baby boomers that started sort of what we call in, you know, what we know as intermodal today are still in their roles. They have not gotten out of the way for the next generation. And what we're trying to do is help train those mid-level and newbies and kids in school to come into the industry to bring those new perspectives and those new skills. And I mean, I am vaguely technologically literate. Shelly, I know you're, <laughs> you're a rock star compared to me, but I think, you know, if you compare any young person today, they're probably, you know, they are digital natives. They might even be second generation digital natives at this point. So they're going to just inherently take to technology and, you know, just riffing on technology and intermodal. So much of the industry's standard equipment is really fixed. You know, the width of a track is fixed. You know, where the train right of ways go is fixed. The size of the container, it might evolve over time, but pretty much it's going to stay the same for the foreseeable future. You know, chassis technology is evolving, but the fundamentals of needing a frame and some wheels and some things to connect it to a power source going to stay the same, right? So a lot of the fundamental equipment is going to evolve over time. Whereas technology is going to allow the industry to leapfrog, to really revolutionize itself in a fairly short amount of time. You mentioned AI. I think that holds some really interesting opportunities. I know a number of the IANA members are digging into that and using that for things like load optimization, yard optimization, you know, lane choice, et cetera, to help them assess all the different options that can be out there and try to make the best decision possible. A lot of folks are using it for safety. But there's a ton of opportunity for things like visualization of data that I know that you're really into, Shelley. And I think it, it's a great way to kind of bring information alive and help you see opportunities in a new way. But, you know, you need somebody who can use a Power BI or, or something like that to, to help visualize that data. 
so I think, you know, there's a ton of opportunity, but we absolutely need those fresh perspectives coming in, whether they're coming in from outside of the intermodal industry or they're just coming in new and bringing kind of a new excitement and, you know, questioning personality to the table. Because I think that's that's really where we're going to truly grow. Because, I mean, we can keep doing the same thing that we know how to do, but we need some new people to help us learn how to do new things. Yeah. How you said something that was fascinating to me that I just was putting, you know, things together in my head as you were talking. And that's one thing that is very helpful in explaining one of the true values of the IANA organization, right? You know, our members are, a lot of our members are the legacy, the folks that helped bring Intermodal to what it is today. So we still have that legacy, phenomenal knowledge. And, and then IANA is also working with the younger folks that are into this new technology and bringing those two groups together and what other industries really have that opportunity to learn from who started and, and built this from the ground up, the legacy knowledge and bringing in the new. But I think that's a huge piece of what IANA is, is, is that conduit to bring those two together. Absolutely. And, and I think a lot of those folks, I mean, you and I share a friend in Jeff Brashears who, you know, He'd kill me if I said he was around when they started Intermodal, <laughs> but um, he was there in some of the seminal decision making that helped create what modern Intermodal is all about and made it possible to, you know, truly bring the efficiencies, the environmental sensibility, the logistical logic to an industry. And they're they're here, and a lot of them are are very keen to help, you know, share that information. And one of the things that I want to do more of, but do is connect those folks with the new generation of people that are coming into the industry to help them really kind of, you know, understand where the industry has come from. Cause I think that's a huge, you know, part of, you know, we don't necessarily need somebody new who doesn't have any perspective to go back to where we were, right? We want to keep moving forward. Absolutely. Well, it is graduation season. People are graduating high school, trying to figure out what they're going to do in college and graduating college, figuring out what they're going to do with their careers. And you just talked about the diversity of specializations that you can have that can get you into this field. So I guess two-parter here. So for, for those in high school, if a uh, blanket statement, I want to, I'm interested in intermodal after hearing some of this pitch. Is there any particular kind of direction you would suggest somebody go in terms of their studies since they have this four-year runway of, of college ahead of them? Absolutely. Yeah. There's a lot of great things that folks can do. Uh, and depending upon your interest, you know, there are different ways into the industry. And I, you know, I think there's ways for folks to come out of high school and start working immediately in the industry if they choose not to go to, a, you know, kind of a more traditional four-year path, right? Mm -hmm. There are technical schools, but there are a lot of internship programs and apprenticeship programs in the industry that can help them learn those sort of hands-on skills if that's kind of where they're going. In terms of, you know, approaching a, a more, you know, traditional college route, I think it's optimal because I think it really opens up a world of opportunity for someone. And my suggestion is usually, you know, look at our scholarship schools, not because it's self-serving, but because they're great schools and they're in different geographic locations. They're in different types of, of service, if you will. Their focuses are slightly different, but there are a number of schools that are that are focused on logistics, good movement. But we've got 11 schools currently in our scholarship program. 10 of those offer undergraduate programs. Two of them offer graduate programs. And then one of them, as I said, Cal State Long Beach has a high school program. They're a great place to start. And you can start, you know, to see what your options are in terms of the offerings. But any school, you know, has the possibility. But I think, it, you know, going in, if you, if you look at a school that's got a, a logistics program, that is a is going to give you some really solid foundation to give you a kind of a leg up from just a sort of a generic business degree, if you can. I mean, but you know, heck, if you come out of out of school and you just happen to start working in the industry, it's a great place as well. I mean, it's it's not like a, a one size fits all. That's the beauty of it. Yeah. And, and that was the second part of the question. So if, uh, if somebody's just graduating from college, various different degree programs, obviously, what's sort of your tip for searching for a career in intermodal logistics, et cetera? I mean, one easy way is to come to intermodal.org and look at our member companies. And you can see a group of dedicated folks that are supporting the industry, and they're likely going to be interested in talking to somebody who's got an interest in the industry. I know a lot of the larger members have fellowship programs or internship programs to help 
people get started. But I also know that folks in, in logistics are always looking for bright new talent. I know 3PLs in particular need people with high energy, high you know, problem solving skills and you know, curious and, you know, I think that's a great place to, to start. Um, but there's, again, there's places for engineering, I mean, you name it. But I would say, you know, a, a great place to start is reach out to, to intermodal, intermodal.org and, and take a look there. Heck, you just send me an email and I'm, I'm happy, to, I'm happy to, to talk with you about things you can do to get connected. And if a recent graduate is interested in getting connected with a particular area of industry or just wants to talk about it, Send them my way because I'm happy to to help set the hook on somebody because it's a it's a great career and I you know I want I want to spread the word. So how quick question on that? So Please. I agree, yeah, definitely going out to the website. But sometimes it's hard when you when you look at a name of a company and you're like, what I don't know what they do, you know. So one of the things that I find to be another huge asset is the expo every year. And one of the reasons mm-hmm. that there's a multiple reasons of why I think that's a huge asset. But for the college students. They get to go and, and listen to panels and hear from these professionals that are in the industry and hear what they do. Not only do they get to hear what they do, they can go up and meet them and talk to them and then build that relationship on a one-to-one basis. They can look at the expo floor. I mean, they just kind of get that hands-on of, oh, this is what is you know occurs in this function or, oh, uh, this is who this person is and this is their company. And everybody there is really excited to meet people that want to get into the industry. And so I think that's a really great place if you're able to travel is to go to the expo, learn more about what all is involved in Intermodal. And right there, then and there, you can meet people that give you that path, that opportunity for either an internship, a job, those types of things. So, so what do you think about the expo? That's a terrific segue into a whole other area of of my excitement but no you're absolutely right we just for people's perspective we have a student case competition at expo every year i think this is going on the ninth or tenth year by the way um, my favorite (laughs) yeah it is so fun so much fun it's great and um all of our scholarship schools are able to field a team of scholars to come and compete and work a case and present that to a group of industry experts generally pulled from our board, which is sort of the cream of the crop in terms of, of industry thought leaders. That is a great opportunity in of itself. But we tend to encourage all of our scholarship schools to bring as many students as possible to, to Expo for that very reason that you mentioned. Shelly, it's it's a little bit of a one-stop shop for everything. Amazing. And I guess this will sound self-serving, but amazing education. We get top-notch speakers that are all industry experts that are always, you're absolutely right, always really, really open to conversation. So, you know, anybody of, of any sort of career level, they're interested in talking to, but they love talking to students. I've, I've yet to meet any of our speakers that hasn't been thrilled after being able to talk to a student. And then you mentioned the exhibit floor. It's a sort of a one-stop shop of, you know, all of the folks in the industry. Frequently, there's a lot of equipment there. So you can go see, you know, what some of the equipment actually looks like. But you can talk to people in various roles and in various parts of the industry and get a feel for, you know, who they are and and what they do. And like you said, make those connections, you know, share your information, connect with them on a on a social media platform like LinkedIn. And, you know, it could form a lifelong mentor mentee relationship. So it's it's a it's a killer opportunity. And there's loads of folks there that are always I have found extremely excited to talk to a student and help them out in any way they can. Yeah, and, and let's let's uh, touch on that case competition one more time, Hal, just because uh, again, it's it's one of my favorite things. I get, I've judged for many, you know, the past few years, so it's a lot of fun to judge that. But you know, one of our previous speakers on the podcast was Larry Gross. So you know, you hear case competition, and you're like, okay, that sounds kind of fun. But really, <laughs> I mean, so I, you know, tell us a little bit about what Larry goes through and puts something together and how it just is. It's, it's creative. And, and these students, they're, they're not just doing a book report, right? They're, they're creating. No. These students always amaze me, always amaze me because they have a very limited time and, and in some cases, limited resources to be able to take a case and work it and deliver their presentation. But like you said, we work with Larry Gross to help develop these cases that are based on usually real life scenarios. Sometimes we'll mix and match various pieces. Sometimes they're more 
data heavy. Sometimes they're more, you know, you've got to really think outside the box focused. But we we pull those together into a realistic scenario that places the students in a decision making role, and they've got to make some hard decisions. And frequently, there's no right decision. It's just you know, or no wrong decision either. It's it's sort of what makes the most sense. How well can you defend your decision making? And it's incredible to see. But we go through a development process with Larry, and then the case gets shared with the students depending on the the style of the event. Because we've sometimes we'll change up the way that we present the case to them. Sometimes they have a little bit more time in advance. Sometimes they don't, and they'll get the case. They'll work it. They'll figure out. We'll give them some guidance in terms of potential questions that might come that they they should certainly be prepared for, but they need to work through all the scenarios. They do a presentation, and then if they're selected to go to the next round, they'll have sort of a defense where they, they get to answer questions from the judges about their presentation. And it is fascinating. And the students have tend to just blow my mind with some great insights. They Some of these kids come to Expo never having set in a class on intermodal. And they will, you know, because of when our, our Expo is in September, and some of these kids, you know, may be coming into a, a program that starts junior year or sophomore year, say. So it always amazes me the, the eagerness that they bring to it. But it is a fascinating process. You're absolutely right. And the thing that I always love is that it's like, I mean, you know, it's ripped from the headlines kind of kind of topics where, you know, I've I've absolutely seen judges sit at the table and, you know, listen to a, a concept from a student and go like, huh, yeah. And like you can see their gears in their heads going like, I've got to remember that because I need to tell my people that you yeah. know, we've got to we've got to look into that. Yeah, it's very cool. So just a little note on that is uh, we've run across some of our customers that actually in talking and just, you know, on a side note, found out that they went through the program and that they went through, they did the case competition and they talk about how fun it was, how awesome it was, but there's a a true case right there of, you know, these students are getting out there in the work world and they're, they're becoming transportation professionals and enjoying what they're doing. I had a similar case. I was at a propeller club meeting in Baltimore and I met a young man who was doing logistics with with Volkswagen, who was working on opening a, a new Roro, this, you know, inbound Roro in Baltimore, not intermodal, but you know, it's still pretty darn cool. <laughs> uh, but he came, he came through the scholarship program. He participated in the case competition and I mentioned Diana and he raced across the room and just was so excited about the work that he had done in school, being able to participate in that case competition and how lifelike. He said that like in hindsight, you know, he was thinking back on the case that they had worked and how, how true to like life it was for, you know, every day of his, of, of his real business life. So it was, it was a, that was a really fun experience for me as well. Well, so you talked about the scholarship institutions that are going to, uh, that take part in the competition, for instance, and that students can find those on the website. But uh, tell us a little bit more about what the scholarship opportunities are through IANA. So IANA, over the inception of this program, and to date we've given, we're just under the 5 million mark in terms of uh, scholarship dollars that we've given. And we'll, we'll blow past that and be close to six by the end of the year, I think. And we started out small with a single school and grew to a number of schools. But those our funds tend to offset tuition. So when students choose to join a program that is participating in our scholarship program, we'll do direct offset through the institution. So the students don't actually have to do anything, but their tuition bill gets reduced. In a couple of instances, we will do matching funds with an institution so that at least one of the graduate programs, there's an offset. So we will basically do like matching funds with a member company that sends their professional student to this this graduate program. And, um, you know, for the students, it's pretty easy. They don't have to apply. The school does all the, the heavy lifting in terms of setting up the scholarship program and then maintaining it. And we offset their programmatic costs. So the students get the benefit with basically no no effort on their part if they're selecting one of our scholarship schools. I have to say it's probably the most fulfilling part of my job. So we don't want to keep you too much longer, but we've been focusing on the folks coming into the industry from the beginning. 
But mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned a, a bit about you know people who may be doing something else right now, and then they see an opportunity over yeah. in intermodal. So how does somebody approach approach it from that angle? I hate to keep sending people back to the IANA website, but there's a ton of great information on there. And if they come back, we've got a new website coming online soon that'll be really fresh and, and a lot easier to use, but there's a wealth of information on there. One of the pieces is the intermodal fact book that we put together, which is a bit of a very short primer on what intermodal is and how it works. There's a couple of interesting videos that we have up that folks can see. There's also an online course that we just released last year. And we're actually getting ready to do some upgrades on that. But that's a multi-part course that folks can work through. And it's um, currently it's all text-based. So it's really, it's completely self-paced. So they can work them their way through multiple facets of the program and take it in sort of bite-sized chunks and kind of work the pieces that they want. So one of the things that we're encouraging folks to do is if they have a somebody that's changing industries or they're changing mode, say somebody's coming out of, you know, say working at a railroad in, you know, oil, you know, they're, they're, they're working in, in or, um, or automobiles and they're moving into intermodal. There's a lot of great information in there for somebody that has some baseline knowledge, but can kind of cherry pick the stuff that they need to learn. So I would absolutely encourage both employers, but also new employees to go over to intermodal.org and then go to the education link. And there's access to the course that they can get there. That'll give them kind of a, it's a bit of a, you know, a college program in a box, if you will. Yeah. So how I would say, you know, and, and you mentioned it, but I, putting a little different spin on it being, you know, running the company here is everybody always looks for when you get new employees and, and let's just take somebody out of college or, you know, any, any type of new employee, you always look for that orientation training material to get people up to speed. And I think that that's very important to know that IANA has that course and has that offering. So when you have these new employees, you can help put them through that orientation phase and you don't have to feel all that burden of, I've got to train all this on my own. Um, yeah. You can get some of that knowledge through that course and, and help bring that about as they you know do their studies. And that learning curve may be shorter then, and it won't be as big of a hill for them to climb as they get into that position in that role. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think, you know, we archive all our webinars so folks can go back and, and look at the webinars that we offer. A lot of them are part of what we call the Intermodal University Series, which we like to think of as sort of an introductory topics to the industry, but they tend to be extremely interesting and a wonderful resource. We did one on, you know, what is intermodal, you know, a primer on intermodal from the rail perspective. So the sort of the traditional definition of, of intermodal, you know, the IMC focus that has been wildly successful. We did that with the folks at RailLink and it's a wonderful resource and that's available on, on the education, education on demand. But I, I think you're right. There's also a lot of great information on Intech's website uh, that again, <laughs> I, 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 I send people over there, you know, I'm responsible for at least a few click throughs on, on the Intech website <laughs> frequently because it's such a great wealth of information that's freely available to anybody, competitors, folks in different modes, because I think you guys realize, and this is this is what I got from you early on, Shelly, is we're all in this together. There is so much business opportunity. We don't need to be paranoid. The more informed we all are, the better partners we're going to be. Because one of the interesting things and I think fun things about Intermodal is, you know, one day the company that you're talking about could be a competitor. The next day they could be a business partner. The next day they could be a vendor versus some resources. You just never know. It's a very fluid world and there's a lot of interesting opportunity. So, so true. Um, I, I think that's, that's a uh, kudos to you guys, but I think there, there are some, some interesting resources out there. The American Railroad Association has some interesting stuff. Some of the class one railroads have some, some good things. I mean, there's, there is a lot of resources out there, but I think you're right. Sometimes it can be overwhelming. And I would say, you know, start with us. And if you've got questions, hit us with questions and we'll always get back to you and say, you know, help direct you if, if somebody needs, you know, sort of a deeper dive into something. Great. And I guess last thing, since we've talked about it a couple of times, as far as the expo goes, are we already in the season where somebody could be registering for that if they're interested? Absolutely. Yeah. If you head over to intermodal.org and go to events, you can register right now for Intermodal Expo. It's coming up in the second week of, of September. And we're going to be in Long Beach, California again, beautiful Long Beach. And I think we've still got hotel rooms. So I would 
you know, go ahead and think about registering soon. But yeah, we would love to see you out in Long Beach. And it's it's going to be a great time. We've got a, a really good program coming together. We've got the the draft of the program up so folks can see the the sessions that we're going to be working. The exhibit hall is always bustling and, you know, we're going to have, you know, well north of 100. I think we you know, we're probably going to have around 130 or 140 exhibitors that are, you know, kind of soup to nuts of of the industry. And a lot of folks, we had a record turnout last year and we're looking to better that this year. So absolutely, it's a great time to be thinking about, you know, what to do in, in September. And honestly, there's not a better place to be than, than Long Beach in September. So mm-hmm. that's right. Don't miss it. Well, Hal, thank you very much for joining us again. I think we just kind of scratched the surface uh, of some of this stuff, even though uh, we've been uh, going over it for a bit. So, so maybe we'll yeah. try to touch base again in the future and then get into some more detail. I'd love to, you know, I appreciate you bearing with me. I get, I get excited and I get, get on a roll, but uh, <laughs> at, you know, there, there's, there's a lot to dig into here and, you know, it's as exciting as it possibly could be for somebody. So if you like solving problems, if you like uh, doing well, you know, both doing good and doing well, Intermodal is a great place to be. Thank you, Hal. Thank you, Shelly. Thank you, Kevin. I really appreciate it. Thanks for joining us for InTech Freight and Logistics, the podcast. And thanks very much to Hal Pollard for taking the time to speak with us. Check out the links in the description to learn more about everything we discussed. Subscribe or follow now to ensure you get our latest episodes as soon as they're available. And you can help us out by rating and reviewing us wherever you listen. If you have questions, email us at podcast at intechlogistics.com and visit intechfreight-logistics.com for more about what we do. For Shelly Austin, I'm Kevin Baxter. We'll talk to you next time.